Hello, everybody. Andrew Majewski here with Dental L. I am currently in my home office. Check it out. It is still so exciting to me to have a home office because I just opened a couple weeks ago. So I just thought I would add that for you. But we are here to talk about your self-assessment tool for your portfolio, okay? So I am showing you guys how to fill yours out because you need this done by January 31st, 2020. In fact, I want you guys to do it right now, okay? I am going to show you how, and then I want you guys to pause this and then do it on your own right now. Don't wait until the last minute or do not wait for a couple weeks. Do not wait until tomorrow because you will forget. And if you don't fill out this simple thing, it, it, it will mean you are automatically audited. And who wants to be audited without needing to be, right? So please fill it out. Okay. So all you have to do is log into your smile portal and then you need to go up to learning portfolio. Okay. So I didn't do that. I'm kind of in the learning portfolio now. So if you have any troubles with that, let me know. But the main thing to go up to is the year 2020. So when you log in, it will automatically go to 2019 or depending on when you're watching this, it will go to the year where you are now, but you need to click up here. So, um, the upper left select year to view 2020. So click on that. And then this page loads automatically. Okay. And then you will see on the left hand side, um, you will see different things to fill out. So I had just filled out my employment status. So I actually clicked that first and then I thought, oh shoot, I should be doing a video. So click that and then just make sure to fill that out and make sure to save it. And then you go down to 2020 self-assessment. So notice how there's a check mark beside number one, but there's the X beside number two because I have not done that yet. So all you have to do, check this out, you guys, and click here where it says standard of practice type. So depending on what you had chosen before, this might say, say something different to you, okay? But click on this right here because a lot of people email me and say, okay, I'm at the self-assessment tool. I don't see what I have to fill out. So you have to click this here where it says number one, standard of practice type, okay? So click on that. And just take some moment, two moments. And this is all you have to fill out. Yes, it might look intimidating, but you guys, it's self-explanatory, okay? So um, if you don't want to watch me or hear me fill this out, then you can just pause it now and then do this on your own time. But if you're curious, then let's kind of do it together. So I'm actually going to zoom in so you guys can actually see this. So my apologies if it was kind of hard to see before. I'm going to just quickly um, recap what I just told you guys um, because it's much easier to see. So go up to the left-hand side, make sure your um, year says 2020 up here. So just kind of click that here and then make sure to click self-assessment down here. Okay, that's it. So this is what it looks like. Um, and always make sure to click save, okay? So save and continue working. That way you're saving your work, if that makes sense, because things happen. The power could go out, knock on wood, something could happen, and then all of this work is kind of for nothing, right? Okay, so I'm just going to fill this out. I'm not going to read everything to you because that would take twice as long, but I am literally just, just going to read them in my head. If something sounds confusing to me, then I'll kind of explain it more. So what it looks like to me is the first part is basically self-explanatory, okay? If you say no to any of these, then they're going to question you. I'm not saying to lie, but if you guys read through them, all of these as a dental hygiene, um, a dental hygienist, healthcare professional, we should be doing, right? So just as an example, let's take um, this one here. Um, I assist in the prevention and management of um, outbreaks and emergencies. If I said no, well, why would I not assist in that, right? Like, why would I not assist in emergencies? If for some reason, um, all I can think of is if for some reason your office has said, if there's an emergency, we don't want you helping out, then I suppose you would say this doesn't apply to my practice. 
but that doesn't make sense, right? So you see what I'm getting at? Like, make sure to read everything, but obviously um, don't lie either. Um, I'm just going to read these quickly to myself again. Um, you know what? All of these make sense, right? Like, let's just say for another one. If you said no to, I welcome and participate in interprofessional um, collaboration and um, consultation. If you said no to that, then that's basically saying that if you need to refer somebody, you're not going to because you feel that that's wrong. Well, that's, we have to, like we have to refer because we can't do everything. So if you said no to that, they're going to probably call you and question you. Okay, so I feel like number one here is basic stuff. Okay, so number two, okay, so these are obviously important. Um, I'm just gonna read them to myself here and then I'm going to um, explain any of them that I might feel you might have um, trouble with. I'm a quick reader. <laughs> I'm lucky that way. I'm a very quick reader. Okay, so number two is the same thing. If you said no to anything, people would, or sorry, not people, but the CDHO would wonder. So let's just take 2C. I take responsibility for and the appropriate steps towards informing and correcting errors that occur in the practice. So if you said no, I mean, well, so you're not doing that. So if you do something wrong, you don't care. Well, you really shouldn't be a dental hygienist if that's the case. So do you get the idea? Like these are for you to almost review what you should be doing. And if you kind of say, oh shoot, I don't understand what that means. Am I correcting errors? No, I'm not. I should work on that. You know, like that type of thing, if that makes sense. Um, and see, this all makes sense. Um, I can see maybe some people might say, I do not meet the standard to number 2G. So I'm going to read that for you. So I ensure adequate policies and procedures are in place to protect the privacy of client health information. You might say, I don't know what procedures our office has. I don't understand the policies that our office has. You know, don't lie. So you could even say, I partially meet the standard, okay? So partially might mean you know you protect client privacy because you're just assuming that you always do, right? But do you know your office policies? Well, maybe not. So then you could say partially and then see how when I had changed it to partially, it, it will incorporate, a, um, or not incorporate, but it will suggest a goal to use for your portfolio. So it actually does make it quite easy. And again, you guys, I can't say it enough. Don't lie, but just keep in mind, if you say no to some of these, they'll be like, okay, you should have said partially, or because at least that tells us that you want to learn, right? Um, but having that said, I just clicked, I do not meet the standard to see what would happen. And it, it didn't do anything. It just sort of um, kept the same um, suggestion. So that's okay. So you, so you see how the CDHO does try to help you. So does that make sense? Um, but I know our policies anyway. But this is more for me, um, a self-assessment because I am now an independent dental hygienist. I actually have my own practice where I work only um, doing that. So these are something for me where I would have to make sure like, okay, do I have an office manual? Do I have office policies? So that if patients want to know how I protect their privacy, I'm not kind of like, oh, um, yeah, so yeah, I protect it. You know, they might want to know more. So this is good review, so to speak. Okay, knowledge application. So I'm going to read these again. Yeah, you know what? These all make sense too. So it's basically, um, are you learning? I mean, well, that's kind of more for the next one, but um, let me see. Sorry, guys, just double checking. So I kind of feel like number three and number four is based on 
your learning. Okay, so are you actively learning? If you're writing your portfolio, you have probably done a lot of continuing education. So yes, you are. If you haven't been audited yet, but you're thinking, okay, it's going to happen any time now because I have not been audited yet or in a long time, then you have to remind yourself that you always need to be learning. Um, just so I can quickly show you guys. So as an example, for I, I do not, I do not seek opportunities to participate, um, to participate in mentorship. So I would actually say, no, I do not. Um, and that's because I don't have time. I did apply to be um, a mentor with the CDHO a couple of years ago, but I was denied because I couldn't give as much time as they needed. I forget the amount of hours they require, but I just simply couldn't do it. So if I said that I'm, I meet this standard, I'm lying because I'm not, in, I mean, I shouldn't say that I'm not interested, but I'm not seeking opportunities to be a mentor through the CBHO. I'm a dental hygiene and dental assisting tutor, so I kind of feel like I'm my own mentor, but on my own time. But that's why I said, um, I par um, should I say I partially meet? I'm going to say I partially met or meet the standard because I do mentor through other ways, but not with the CBHO. But again, if I said I meet the standard, that's lying because I don't. So you don't have to answer yes to everything. The worst thing you can do is just simply click through and say yes, 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 because they're going to probably question it. Um, let me just read this again. Yeah, these all sound good. So that's why I'm going to say I meet the standard for all of them, except for the mentorship, because I don't. In fact, every self-assessment that I've done for the past like four years, I have just said I partially meet it because I'm not going to be a mentor with the CDHO. Okay, next one. Uh, professional relationships. Okay, so this one definitely read through, of course. Um, looks good to me so it's basically do you work with other people now i'm an independent dental hygienist so i'm not actually working in an office anymore where i'm talking to dentists and hygienists all the time but i do send out my patients for a referral if needed so that's where i'm going to say yes i meet the standard um, cause if I have to, I have to, like, I have no problem doing that. Um, now I can say though, I do not meet the standard for the last one because the last one is I demonstrate a commitment to the profession through community service activities and affiliations with professional organizations. Actually, I do, you guys, have you guys heard of, um, a gift from the heart. So it's a one day event, a one to two day event where a dental hygienist can um, volunteer her time, um, his or her time to clean um, people's teeth who don't have the money and who just simply don't have the resources needed to pay for it or to, you know, to pay for it basically. Um, so that is coming up. I think April 6th or April 4th. I have to check my calendar again. Um, I did that last year. So yes, I do actually um, participate in some things. So I am, I am going to say I partially meet the standard because do I do it all the time? No. Um, again, my fault. I'm just so busy. I'm doing so much. But I do make sure to do it at least once um, a, um, a year for the gift from the heart. Um, should I say I meet the standard? Because I do do it. You know what? This would actually be a good um, goal for me um, to do for my portfolio. I could look into other ways that I can help. So I am going to copy this. See you guys? The CD, whoops, the CDHO is helping. <laughs> I am going to copy this and I'm going to paste it to my notepad afterwards because that's actually a really good thing that I should do because I do have my own office now. So I set my own hours. So I am going to look into community things that I could actually do to just 
help um, more. So see you guys perfect. Okay, so as I said, you guys, this will be a longer video because I'm going through things as I'm reading them. You don't have to listen to me. Feel free to stop the video and do your own thing, okay? <laughs> okay, so number five. Let's see. Again, this makes sense. If you say no to any of these, it means you're not a very nice person. <laughs> like, it just means, you know, um, you're not a dental hygienist. You're just not doing what you should be doing. Um, you know, like as an example, if you said no to number 5.2B, I demonstrate active listening and empathy to support client services. If you say no, so does that mean you don't listen and support client services? Well, why would you say no? If you're saying no, then you really shouldn't be a healthcare professional, right? <laughs> right? I mean, come on. Okay, so that's fine. Next one, practice environment. So, okay, so I'm going to say yes to these as well because I own my own practice and I make sure to do all of this. Um, let's see, I'm just going to click. Okay, so for example, so number 6E. This is a problem that I had um, earlier this year, and I should have actually made this as a goal for my portfolio. So you guys, I'm just gonna pause this for one second. I'm going to open up a notepad. Actually, I think I can do that now. I'm going to open up a notepad on my other computer or um, my other monitor, so then that way I can take notes. Hold that thought one moment. I'm gonna pause the recording. There you guys, sorry about that. So can everybody see my screen again? So I just kind of paused it quickly here. Um, and I just took some notes, but um, yeah, so this is a problem or not a problem, but this took me time to research early on in the year to figure out what medical equipment I need as a dental hy um, hygienist, because I'm not a dentist, but we pretty much need the same things, which is ridiculous because it's expensive as heck and yeah, but people have to be safe, right? So, um, so if I was doing this for my portfolio last year, then I would have said I partially meet this standard because I, I would be looking into it. But now I can say, yes, I do meet this because I have looked into it and I make sure that I have everything. Um, let's see, everything else is again, pretty self-explanatory. Okay, next one, practice management. Okay, this is fun. So especially if you're working in another practice, for 7A, you might say, oh, I partially meet this because, so if it's not up to you how long you book a patient for, then you would say, I partially meet this standard or I do not meet this standard or even perhaps it does not apply to my practice because if you have no control of how you book your clients, if somebody else does it for you, that would suck, but if that's the case, then don't lie and say you meet the standard because you don't. You would say maybe I partially or I do not meet or it does not apply to me and then you would hopefully explain that further um, and explain to this the CDHO, well that's because I don't have any control in the office where I am or you might say well I do book my own clients but if they cancel and then they're rebooked by the front desk, then I don't have control and then I don't have enough time to see patients. So that's kind of up to you. But guess what, you guys? I can say yes to all of these because I own my own practice and I book my own schedule. It's amazing, let me tell you. So let me see here. Let's see. There, no, it all sounds good to me. Um, again, early on in the year, I might have answered differently to some of these because I was doing paper charting. It was really hard for me to be organized since purchasing a dental software that has helped so much. I did purchase um, QuickBooks to also help with my accounting. So I'm more organized than I was at the beginning of the year only because I wasn't expecting my dental hygiene practice to take off so quickly. So a good problem to have, but it kind of took me by surprise. You think you're organized until you're not. So yeah, so just make sure you are organized. Um, let's see. 
for assessment, this all makes sense as well. So I'm personally going to say yes to all of these. Let's see, did I, did I change any up here? I can't remember. I think just the mentorship one, right? Um, and, and to, to um, help out more in the community. So I did that. Okay. Um, let's see. So this is fine. Let's see. <laughs> so this is all true. Yeah, I think it all sounds pretty good, you guys. Okay, next one. Dental hygiene diagnosis. So just basically how you interact with your patients. Are you following the ADPI process, which we all should be doing? Um, so let's just say 8.2B. I use available um, literature and or visuals and or auto, um, um, audio materials to aid in the discussion of the assessment findings and or oral conditions present. So let's say you don't show them any pictures, you don't um, talk about the facts. Then you might say, I partially meet the standard or you do not meet the standard or does not apply to your practice if you're not the one maybe talking to your patient, which I guess is impossible. But you know, so always think about how it works for you. I meet all of this because I actually like showing pictures on my iPad. I like sort of showing pictures, you know, I, I don't know how else to say it, but I do talk about everything as much as possible. Um, so I can say yes to this, but I can see how some people might not have the same um, resources. So then you might say you partially meet this. Okay. So always read everything very, very quickly. Um, planning interventions. I do plan a lot with my patients, um, especially as an example, the ones that tell me that they don't like to floss. I might say, okay, start to floss once a week for now, but I want you to be doing it every day, but at least do it once a week. And then in a couple weeks, do it twice a week. I will talk to you in three months and we'll go from there you know so i like to plan for them not just simply saying okay you have to floss every day see you later so i like to give them a goal that they're able to um, attain easier so i can definitely say yes to all of these definitely definitely okay looks good to me um implementation okay so do you implement properly I might say for 8.4 C, I'm going to say I partially meet the standard only because, oh, that's tricky. Um, no, I'm going to say it does not. Mm, okay. My thought process is as an independent dental hygienist, I don't have any hazardous waste. No, you guys, I technically do, don't I? Because if a gauze is soaked in blood, that's technically hazardous waste. So I'm changing my mind. I'm going to say yes. To I meet the standard. I I was just thinking like I don't have needles to dispose of, but I do have a sharps container for um, the edge tips. I don't even know if they have to go in there, but I think I'm just paranoid sometimes, so I did put them in there. Um, but yeah, anyways, guys, sorry, I'm just kind of talking to myself. I think <laughs> so. Yeah, but read every question carefully because I kind of I definitely have to. These ones I'm going to read a little more. Let's see. Eight point four F. I don't obviously give local anesthetic, but I do have topical to help manage their pain, and I do have desensitizers. Um, I wonder if I say partially meet. Yeah, well, I'm doing that though, so I'm just going to say I fully meet it. No, I think this all sounds pretty good, you guys. Okay, evaluation, last one. Yeah, again, this all sounds pretty good. So I'm going to say yes to all of these, but I do like how it gives you um, um, goal ideas. I'm going to use some of them because <laughs> they're really, really good. Yeah, you guys, so do, do you have any questions? Um, 
Let me know if you do. As I said, I love the fact that if you say you partially meet something, it helps you come up with a goal to use if you're audited. So I do really like that. Um, I'm going to save this so I don't forget to save it. As always, you guys, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, let's just see what happens. So I click save, but notice how there's still the X towards the 2020 self-assessment. So I'm going to take it a step further and I'm going to say that I'm all done. Just kind of looking through this again, make sure. Yeah, so I'm just gonna say I'm all done so that you guys can see that is what you need to do. Whoops, please select an option. Where is it telling me? Oh, whoops, see, I forgot one. <laughs> there, so I'm all done. So you guys can see what it looks like when you are all done, yes. Make sure to click that for them to be able to see your self-assessment. Because again, you guys, if you don't fill it out, you will be audited automatically. See how there's now a check mark here? Done. So I can say I have done it. Don't have to worry. You should go do the same thing. Let me know if you need anything. And thank you guys so much for watching.